Hey guys, Wade Willis here for Wade's Weeb Reviews, breaking down episode 17 of Higurashi Go. So much to get into. This episode answered a lot of questions, but then, like for me personally, I have so many more. Um, a lot of us were right about Satoko. Great, but now how does this actually work? What's going on here? And uh, before I like really get into that, guys, guys, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I have tons of Higurashi content. Actually, I have tons of When They Cry content overall. I'm doing a playthrough of Umineko, actually getting into like some of the good stuff now. I've, like everything's kind of set up, so you guys should definitely check that out. And, and leave a like, it helps a lot. Now guys, as always with these, I'm going to like break down kind of the important points and things that I gathered from this episode at first and then i'm going to go into the theory portion so those of you that don't want theories or things spoiled that have happened in the past i'll let you guys know and you can kind of skip here but at this point they've kind of given uh all of you new viewers most of the stuff you need to move forward they start off with a flashback to kai where we see takano just freaking yeeting everyone in their group and I, like I, I figured it was a flashback. If you were new, you were probably like, what the hell's going on? But yeah, now you guys know that was a flashback. She did do that. Uh, and she was kind of like a mastermind. You could have inferred that because they kept mentioning her name throughout all the stuff in the first 10 minutes. Uh, so that's what happens in the original Higurashi. Um, I'm not spoiling anything because they already told you. I feel like that we're actually going to be able to see a real redemption of Takano. You could see that she felt so bothered by what she was planning to do and what she has done in the arcs previously. And I'll get into my opinion of why she feels the way she does later on, but it did seem very sincere, which threw off Rika, understandably. Yeah, Rika was really in like disbelief seeing Takano do this. And I believe Rika said like, you mean not in a hundred years would you, uh, would Takano go back on what her plans were? Well, I mean, technically, how many times have you gone through this thing? That might be not the best, uh, <laughs> best way to put it, hundred years, because I believe that Rika's been through those things in a hundred years. So I believe she said a hundred years, so... If she said longer, then okay, but yeah. And then we got into like the Tokyo Bloodhounds who were helping like protect Rika, put, I believe, Takano into hiding. And they're in like those beige outfits. I believe they were a bit darker and they're fighting against the other people in beige outfits. And they're kind of like a bit lighter. Um... <laughs> And you hear this guy's name, Okonagi. He's the guy who was going to pull out the gun and he was basically surrounded. Um, and again, he was a big uh, force in Kai. And if I'm wrong, let me know. But I think someone mentioned like last week in my comments that he was a wizard like as a joke. And I guess like in the When They Cry community, they always joke because he's in like all the visual novels and they say he's like a wizard. Like it's not confirmed, but it's just a joke. Uh, so I thought it was cool that they actually finally had him in this. And if I have the character wrong, let me know in the comments, guys, if, for those of you that are visual novel readers. And someone pointed this out. I had like a theory that Nomura, uh, kind of the girl, the lady from Kai, who's very high up in uh, the Tokyo organization, uh, that she was still pulling the strings and we may see her involved more in the future. Um, and she was referenced... Um, when Okonagi was talking about Cuckoo, that's like her code name. So that was kind of important. They're giving us stuff. I feel like this is going to be relevant in the future. And again, I'll get more into this in some of my theories. But yeah, she was finally referenced in the show. And then we see that the H173, the bioweapon that gives people the Hanimazawa syndrome, like two level five, uh, that that was recovered. And Takano had them. She gives them, she let everyone know where it was. It was in this briefcase. Irie like acts like he's really surprised when he finds this. He thought it was destroyed. I'm still skeptical a bit, but we'll see. Um, so 
that kind of does tell us that people were being injected with the Hanimazawa syndrome uh, drug, H173, uh, in these arcs, uh, especially the ones uh, that have been haywire. So that would make the most sense. Maybe that's a red herring and something else was making them go uh, crazy, but I'm fairly certain uh, we can confirm that it was the H173. And we finally saw another Satoshi like mention. We actually saw him now uh, and we see that he is in uh, a coma and we see a bear up there that he, they talk about how he bought it for Satoko. I had forgotten about that bear and it's actually like kind of important in the original. I've like been talking with people in the comments uh, previously about that. Like, what the heck is this bear that we keep seeing? I can't see it referenced anywhere else. It was in Kai, I believe. And we see that, oh, that bear's there. I do remember it now from Kai. I remember him buying that for Satoko. He saved up a bunch of money for it. It does have the flower like in the opening, except the one in the opening does seem to be smaller. Uh, so that's kind of important, I believe. And uh, with regard to the H173, like real quick again, when we see that Takano had it, it's kind of, a, to me, they're like trying to tell us that Takano was the one injecting people in the other arcs. Uh, we know in the original that does happen, but I don't know. I'm going to get into it more, but I, I feel like that they might be wanting us to believe that. So I'm going to leave that there for now. And then after that, so really the first third of the episode is just kind of a speed run of, okay, if you're new to Higura, if you're new to Higurashi, we're going to tell you as much as we can that happened in Kai in 10 minutes. And that's basically what happens. So from there, everything's working fine. And Rika keeps referencing like, this is like a perfect role. Like, and she even says, like, is someone else rolling this? This doesn't make sense. Uh, she's, like, kind of on edge. And, like, for me personally, I thought they did a good job with this because the way it was done, and I don't know if I'm just conditioned from watching, like, Higurashi and I'm playing Umineko. Like, I'm just conditioned if something good is happening, something bad is going to have to happen after. Like, I'm like, this is going too well. And I felt the same way Rika did. I don't... If you guys felt that way too, let me know in the comments because like I honestly had like a pit in my stomach, like how Rika was talking about as well. I kept waiting for something bad to happen. She kind of has, has like a heart to heart with Satoko. They're overlooking the town and guys, I've been suspicious of Satoko. We all know this and a lot of you have it. Just this conversation was very sus to me, like the how... Satoko was wording things. It was just kind of weird. And Satoko uh, at one point is like, as long as uh, we have like Oyashiro, like we're going to be protected in Hanimazawa. And I'm like, hmm, interesting that she mentions that. Kind of, there's a lot of like foreshadowing and kind of teasing with us in that whole part. Then we get a little slice of life portion with Jamie even more nervous and it's kind of fun. They're playing games, end up finding out that Rika had this plan to celebrate Satoko's birthday and everyone like got gifts and stuff. Really nice for Satoko. We think. So in, if I'm remembering correctly, Satoshi, her brother like went missing on her birthday, I believe uh, the year before. Let me know if I'm wrong in that, but I think that's kind of why a birthday is like kind of taboo a bit for Satoko. And Rika was like, hey, we're trying to change this for you. You should be celebrating this with your friends. Great friend, Rika. And then Rika pulls out a box and Satoko has like a huge reaction. And honestly, it made me think of the, the movie Seven, like what's in the box? I was like thinking that. And we kind of remember back, I think episode one or something, they... Uh, it has the the little like fist in there and it punches Satoko in the face and she has the KO on her face. Uh, well, Satoko reacts when she sees Rika pulling out that box. And Rika's like, oh, how did you know that? And Satoko's like, oh, like I have to know about all these traps, all this stuff. And then Rika 
actually switched it and she has that little bear that's been in the openings with the flower and it's just it looks like a small version of the one that Satoshi got for Satoko. Um, and one thing for those of you that are like, some of you guys really catch wild stuff in here, let me know in the comments. The egg that Reyna gave, uh, is there like some significance to that? I couldn't remember it um, in a different part in the story, but let me know if it's been in something else. But that was just something because they, they were kind of doing like Easter eggs and I thought it was funny they used an egg that could be an Easter egg because even... Uh, Keiichi referenced the broccoli and cauliflower thing um, to Satoko, which in another arc they talk about, but also in the beginning of this episode, Takano asks her which one's green before she shoots her. So I thought that was kind of interesting. They referenced that, so I thought there might be some significance to the egg, but I couldn't remember personally. And then, guys, we get the reveal. A lot of people... Um, have been suspecting Satoko for a long time. There's a lot of theories, like on Reddit, I guess. I didn't really jump onto the bandwagon until like a week or two ago. I started suspecting her a few weeks ago, and then last week for sure, I was like, okay, just everything that's going on, I was very suspicious. Well, they kind of confirmed that she was a looper when we saw kind of the red thing in her eyes. So that was confirmed. She pulls out a gun. Now, someone told me in the comments in my uh, reaction video that uh, she does have like a toy gun in her locker at all times with traps and stuff. We don't see her go to her locker at all in that. I don't know if she pulled like a Grand Theft Auto thing where all of a sudden the gun's in her hand when she's switching through weapons, but she has it. Is that that toy gun or is it a real gun? I don't know. I'm kind of guessing it might be a real gun now but we will find out next episode. Yeah, guys, now I'm going to go into the like theory portion and like just some thoughts that kind of like stuck out to me. Um, one, it does seem like we did get answers to like how uh, the some of the deaths at the end of arc one and two, it does look like Satoko might have been like killing them, then killing herself and looking like it was some weird scene. Uh, so that seems like it could be answered. They did bring up Nomura. I don't believe she was arrested or anything. We don't know where she is. So, like, one theory, and I had this before, I'm not completely sold on it, but she could be kind of a mastermind with the help of a witch, um, and kind of pulling strings, yeah, I, I, I honestly, I don't feel very strongly about that one, but I do feel like she's going to be involved in some way since um, they were bringing up the organization. They kind of showed us all that stuff. I don't know if they were just doing that to get the new fans caught up or there is going to be a greater significance of that. Um, and maybe she will come into play in the next arc because probably a good chance that Rika will die right here. Another theory, like I've seen some people say, I I'm slightly on board with this one, uh, but I don't think it's the best one. And that is, uh, like, obviously we know Satoko's a looper, but that Hanyu is actually helping her out. Logistically, this kind of does would make sense. Really, things started going uh, really crazy when Hanyu, like, left. She could have been there the whole time and only, like, communicating with Satoko it could make sense that Hanyu is punishing uh Rika for Rika leaving in five years and going to uh, the boarding school and everything so like logistically that kind of makes sense um I can see why that could happen something that makes me kind of doubt it is that Hanyu was giving Rika hints that there is another looper possibly but Rika was kind of just like not really listening uh the last time they communicated and she did give Rika the uh like showing her where the sword thing is to be able to kill loopers for me it would be kind of weird if Hanyu just wanted to punish Rika and is like using Satoko who's Rika's friend to like do all of this stuff and then gives Rika the sword to kill Satoko. That's kind of 
like weird to me unless um, Hanyu has not liked Satoko the whole time and wants Rika to be punished and then kill Satoko so the only person or entity that Rika can really turn to after that is Hanyu. That could work. I don't feel strongly about it, but that's like a possible theory. There are some people that are talking about different witches from like Umineko that could be involved in possessing Satoko. I actually believe that it's probably something like that is actually a really good theory. Only problem I can't, I haven't finished Umineko. I'm like 15 hours in right now and I haven't even met anyone other than Beatrice the Witch. So I have no idea. So yeah, I can't really attest to that. It could make sense. I think some witches can possess people. So maybe a witch is possessing Satoko could make sense. We do have like a witch thing in the opening we haven't seen yet. That could likely be the most realistic one. Again, I haven't finished Umineko and I'm very far from finishing it. So I cannot um, comment on that necessarily. The reason I think like the other witch being involved other than like it answers things because I don't <laughs> I haven't finished that game so it's like oh yeah some witch could be doing that and I don't know what the witch's skills are. Um, the other reason is it does give the ability for Hanyu to really be for what Hanyu has been saying to really be taken at face value because like she gave her the thing for the sword. It seems like Hanyu knew that there was another looper. Maybe she didn't tell Rika that it was uh, Satoko because she thought Rika should figure it out herself. There's a lot of stuff that logistically makes more sense if Hanyu isn't the one um, teaming up with Satoko, in my opinion. I could be wrong, but that's, that's kind of where I feel. I know some people feel the opposite. But yeah, if it's another witch, it makes more sense because we can take stuff Hanyu was saying at face value. She did give her uh, the ability to get the um, the sword and was kind of hinting that there was another looper. So I don't know. I kind of feel like that's a, a good option. And uh, the last thing that has been that really confused me after it left me with more questions was I'm like, OK, was Takano injecting the people the whole time? Who was doing it? How did someone, was there another supply of H173 that we didn't know about? Um, could Satoko have been the, because I have thought Satoko was the looper last time and I thought she was maybe getting Irie to like get her a supply of H173. I thought maybe they were in cahoots together. It looks like that might not be true, but I don't think it's, out of the realm of possibilities he could have like acted like he was surprised um in this episode but oh i thought that was all destroyed and known maybe he has his own batch going on there's a lot of stuff we don't know there but if takano was injecting people the whole time what made takano change her mind this loop was it satoko like what's going on here it seemed like the trap Rika set for Satoko was just that box with the bear in it. But really, the first trap she set was telling Satoko like she was sorry for all that stuff at the beginning of this arc. And then all of a sudden, everything goes right. So to me, that was like the first like little trap she set. She like told Satoko these things, which how would things go so much better if Satoko didn't have a ton of power? So I thought that was interesting. That was like the first trap before the final trap with the box with the bear. So I feel like Satoko has a, a lot of power and she's in contact with some entity that has a stupid amount of power that maybe has access to the, this um, injecting people. I don't know. There's a lot going on, but really what made Takano change her mind? Did all of a sudden she get her memories back? Did maybe Hanyu give her the ability to get her memories back? And it seems like she's gone down this path every time. Because if we look, there's no disaster in any of the arcs, it doesn't seem like. Where, I mean, the organization, like, kills the whole town. 
So like we remember there's one part, one of the arcs, Keiichi is like in fall. We see like the fall leaves and the town isn't destroyed. So it seems like Takano maybe makes these moves every single arc in Go. And why is that? So Takano is going to be super important in the future. Yeah, I, I feel like some witch or entity gave her the ability to remember her doing all these horrible things. And that's why she's like kind of doing this as penance for what it's not just what she was thinking about doing, which is horrible, but like she remembers actually doing it. And that's why she's able to like move forward uh, and actually feel horrible about it. So that's kind of my thoughts. I'd love to hear your guys' theories and opinions. Everyone's theories and debates have like been super interesting. I've loved it. Um, guys, remember to put spoiler uh, and then hit return before you get into your stuff uh, when you're starting. You mean your theories. And if you're going to give Umineko theories, put that at the top so I don't read it since I'm playing Umineko. That's like the only thing I ask at that. Uh, most of you who have been talking about Umineko, it's been things that haven't doesn't seem like it would spoil anything. So I appreciate that, and I appreciate everyone like purposely not spoiling it because you guys know I'm playing it. But yeah, if you're going to have a debate about that, just make sure you put Umineko spoiler because I know uh, some other people are starting Umineko right now too. So, but yeah, guys, love to hear your guys' opinions, and yeah, good episode. So many things answered but I have more questions now.